Happy Friday, everybody. My name is Amy Howard, and I am so excited to show you this new finish today. You know, one of the great things about social media is the fact that we can share with one another what it is that we're wanting to be able to learn how to do. And this was a finish that I have been asked multiple times on our before and after group, which I'm gonna use this as a plug to be able to let you know about our before and after group on Facebook. If you aren't part of it, you need to join. There's thousands of people on this closed Facebook group that are sharing their projects every day. And what that does, it allows you to be able to see just how easy it is. And it, it will kind of encourage you, maybe if you're a little hesitant about what to do on your piece of furniture, you'll learn from them. As always, send me some love. Um, you know how Facebook is and all the algorithms, so let me know where you're from, what city you're coming from, and I love the fact that our neighbors in Canada um, and the UK and New Zealand are all popping on here, um, even as far as away from Saudi Arabia and Russia. So welcome everybody. Um, all right, so one of the things that I'm gonna show you today is was actually a request from um, a customer on our before and after group and they wanted to be able to know how to create a particular finish. Well, I knew by looking at it that it was a combination of Venetian plaster and milk paint. So I wanna take you through that process and what that looks like. And afterwards, when you go to do this on your piece of furniture, please take a before picture and then share the after so everybody on this group can be encouraged as well. All right, so I have gone to Habitat. Remember, I tell you first, don't ever start on your piece of furniture. I want you to do a sample or work on a door or drawer first that maybe you get at Habitat. Um, you can go to Goodwill and even to a garage sale, a lot of times I'll buy just loose doors. Now, I am working on a cabinet door. These were really big in the 80s. It's called Melamine. It's on a, um, basically a particle, particle board and it's almost like a Formica material. You can paint over this with the one step, but what's the first thing we always need to do? We need to clean it first. So the reason we talk about using the clean slate, this is a proprietary cleaner. It's a furniture grade cleaner uh, that you need to clean this with. And this is where some people can get off to a bad start. You need to make sure you clean your, your piece first really, really well because let's say the piece was from the 70s or 80s. They used liquid gold and different waxes on it. Those waxes can act as a surfactant to where the paint will not bond as well. So. We developed Clean Slate that it will literally take off wax. You know, paint thinner won't even take off wax. TSP, any of those cleaners that are degreasers will not remove a petroleum-based wax. So let's get that off first. So I had that here. I wanna make sure that's the first thing you do on your piece. Now, the other thing that you can do in doing this finish is we're gonna to have to come back and we're gonna paint it with the one step first. Now, even on this melamine, because it's white, I don't want to put the plaster directly on top of the melamine. Plaster does not have the bonding agent in it that we need. So after you clean it, the first step is going to be to apply the one step paint. The one step will bond to this and give you a beautiful base. So I'm not gonna paint this, I've already got a piece painted today, but this is Bauhaus Buck. This is our number one selling color in the one step and it's close enough to the plaster, this is what I would prefer that you use. We also have our specialty wedge brushes um, that are on the site now, and this is a microfiber synthetic brush. I'd like for you to use this to be able to apply the one step. So I'm going to set this aside. So we've cleaned it, we put on one coat of one step, and we're ready to go. So this is what your piece is going to look like. More than ever, I want you to work on small surfaces. As you are dissecting your piece, whether you're working on an armoire or a nightstand or a chest of drawers or maybe even a bed, maybe you're working on a small piece like urns. And I wanna use this as a segue to be able to show you. Take a look at these. These are some new corbels, some urns, some sconces that we have on the website for you to be able to do finishes on. If you wanna do a Venetian plaster finish, you want to be able to put the milk paint on top of it like we're showing you today. These are fabulous for that. So you can go to the website and check that out and that way you will not have to clean these. You'll just start directly with your plaster. Only have, you only have to do the one step application if you're needing to bond to an old piece of furniture that's maybe stained or lacquered or has a finish like this. The other thing that I want to remind you guys is if this is your first time popping on or maybe you're one of our our diehards, we love you so much. 
This is your opportunity to ask me questions and I can answer them live. There are no dumb questions. It's really a great opportunity that other people can learn from your questions um, and then that way we're all on the same page. So this piece has the one step on it. Now I'm gonna mix up my plaster. So this is, a, um, this is a pure Venetian plaster. A lot of you will say, how is your plaster different from other people? Um, many of you know that I worked in a bodega in Florence, Italy, and this, the, our plaster only has three ingredients. Um, it has a lime, also it has a calcium carbonate, and it has marble dust. That's it, that's all that's in it. So this is good forever in its dry form, but even when you mix it with water, it's also gonna be good indefinitely. You just need to make sure that you keep it in an airtight container, that way it won't dry out. But let me show you how to mix it. So I'm gonna take just a little cup here that you can see through, and this is in a resealable bag, so that way after you take some out, you can seal it back up. And I'm gonna take out a couple of teaspoons. You're gonna mix this one part powder with one part water. And because this looks like we're cooking, I always tell people to make it about the consistency of sour cream. If you wanna make it a little bit thicker later, because we do use this on walls, you can use the plaster on a lot of different surfaces, um, but I don't wanna go off on talking about Venetian plaster too terribly much. I wanna be able to stay with how we're gonna use it on this finish today. All right, now here's another tip. Always make sure that you start with warm water, not scalding hot but not too cold. I'd like for it to either be at room temperature or you can have it a little warmer. It's going to mix your milk paint as well as your Venetian plaster a lot smoother. And when I'm getting ready for a project, always think about it the night before. We know a lot of you, Fridays are a big day. Um, Thursday and Friday, we have a lot of people buy their products for the weekend because Saturday is gonna be their day to do their projects. I recommend making your milk paint and your plaster the night before. That allows the water to absorb into the paints and the plaster, and that way it won't be lumpy. And you can also take like a mason jar, put it inside, and then turn it and shake it. Um, but now, let's get a close up where you can kind of see this. See how it's kind of the consistency of sour cream or a Greek yogurt. That's gonna make it really easy to be able to be brushable you know, this is, oh, I forgot to tell you. I do love doing this on um, iron urns. Um, if you're gonna be using it outside, we will need to seal it. But this also looks great on clay pots. That look that you wanna be able to have it look very vintage and old and kind of flaky. I promise this is gonna be one of y'all's favorite new finishes. All right, so I wanna just stir this up a little bit. Make sure you get all the lumps out of it. Kind of like if we were cooking, we wanna make sure that our cake batter doesn't have lumps in it. All right, so I'm gonna take my chip brush. You know, we talk a lot about tools. What brushes do I use with this? How do I know? So this is, um, this is a really good tip. I don't want you to use the microfiber that we painted with the one step. Don't use the microfiber. I want you to use a chip brush. Um, the Amy Howard at Home chip brushes are twice as thick as an average chip brush, but I love the density of it when I'm trying to apply the plaster. I don't like using a microfiber. All right, so I'm gonna load this up like this. Yes. Question, do yes. you always paint with one step first? The reason for the one step, who asked this question? Denise Crabtree. Okay, Denise, great question. The only reason you need to start with the one step first is because that's your binder. I don't want you, if you're working with an old piece of furniture, I don't want you to use Venetian plaster directly on top of an old piece that you've gotten from Goodwill or um, an estate sale. If it's an older piece, it has lacquer or varnish or a finish like that, put the one step on it first, then you can go to the Venetian plaster. That's a great question. Another question? Yes. Can you do this on plastic planters? Yes, you can. Who asked this question? This was Jennifer Park. Hey, Jennifer. Yes, that's a great question. And what's so exciting about being able to use, maybe it's resin, maybe it's um, pieces like this that are more wood pulp or plastic, I would go to a wholesale florist and buy the, the cheapest plastic containers, but once you do this finish on it, it looks really expensive and very authentic. Love that. All right, so now, look, I'm, I'm coming directly on top of my one step with the plaster. You can make this a little bit thicker if you want to, but look how I'm, I've made it thin enough and the sour cream consistency so I can brush it on. 
So I'm not really concerned about going um, in any particular direction. I'll pounce it in like on a carved surface and then just kind of feather it out like this. I want to make sure that I've got plenty of on there. I want really good coverage. And if you want it a little bit more textural, just kind of lay it down like this and allow it to dry. All right. So again, with the Venetian plaster, it's water-based. It will clean easily out of your hands with simple soap and water. But remember, if you are conducive to your skin drying out, you might want to just use some surgical plastic gloves because it does have lime in it. Um, I wash my hands right after I work with it and put some lotion on and I'm fine. Um, I just don't like working with gloves. I like touching. Y'all know that about me. Yes. Somebody else wants to know if you can do this technique on a tabletop. That's a really good question. Who asked this one? That would be Linda to Musk. Okay, Linda, you can use it on a tabletop, but here's the caveat. When you've got a large flat surface area, it's gonna be difficult to be able to put the milk paint on to where you're gonna be happy with the color. As a rule, I'll tell people to have maybe um, a stained wood top, you know, um, we could go in later, I will do that on another show as far as using gel stains. Have your base to where you do the Venetian plaster in the finish. It's great to be able to do those combos, or you can just um, roll on a coat of the one-step paint, just have it solid and maybe wax it, and do this finish on the bottom. So, love that question. All right, are we good? We're good. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to move on to my milk paint. Um, these are two of my favorite colors, Amalfi Coast and Noir. So, I don't want it as bright a blue, so I'm going to mix them together. Now, remember, your um, when your milk paint dries down, it's going to dry down to the color it was when it's in the container. When you add water, it's going to get darker. But then when it dries back down again, it's going to be this exact color. And a lot of you don't really realize the difference of our milk paint. We make these ourselves. I have all of the pigments flown in from Provence, and then that way they're all documented, like from paintings. Um, these are real natural pigments. They're not synthetic. So the look you're going to get uh, from this application, you're going to love it. All right, so I'm going to take again just a little bit out of here like this. Can y'all see? All right, I'm going to add a little bit of black. Now, I want you to test it. You can weigh this. You can do it by measuring cups as far as coming up with your color because I always want you to test and do a sample first before you actually go in and start executing. Look at that gorgeous color. Isn't that pretty? Now, this is what it's going to dry down to. I'm going to add just a little bit more blue. Now, again, it's really important, don't use cold water, use tap water. This is going to be one part water and one part powder paint, all right, or milk paint. So I'll add a little bit and I'll stir it around to make sure that my consistency is good. And there again, you can use the same process again as far as a mason jar and um, putting the top on and just shaking it up really good. But here's this, I, I want y'all to hear me out really, this is really, really important. If you decide to use a mason jar, put the top on and shake it up really well, that's great. I would like for you to do it the night before, why? Because it will make the granules go away and it'll be a nice smooth paint when you go to paint it. But here's the other caveat. A lot of times people get real excited and they shake it really hard and what happens, they'll be foam. Do not paint with the foam. Take a little bit of cheesecloth from your kitchen um, or any type of oven, open weave fabric. Just lay that on top of another jar and pour it through. Let's strain it because you don't want to paint with foam. That's not going to be a finish that you're going to love. All right, so I added just a little bit more water and you see how we're stirring it up. Please make sure that you, you stir this very, very well and make sure all the granules are gone away. I don't want you painting with grainy paint. You can also put this in a, a Tupperware container and it's good for up to two weeks in the refrigerator. Remember, this is like shopping in the produce aisle. It's food grade. There are no VOCs. There's, um, it's certifiable green and you don't have to worry about it. So we're all about the toxins and things that, that we're working with. So this is just food grade. It almost looks like it, it's in food packaging. Um, but it's, it is going to have only a certain amount of time as far as a shelf life. All right, so I made some earlier. Let me just show you what this looks like. And here's the other thing. As this sits here, the pigment's going to drop to the bottom of the container. So you're gonna have to agitate it. It's almost like knitting. Every time when you're getting ready to do this, you know when you're gonna brush it on, you're gonna agitate the bottom of the container 
Make sure it gets mixed up really well in your brush and then paint it. Do that every time. Don't dip the brush just in the top or you're just gonna be getting the water. We wanna make sure we agitate it so we're getting pigment on there. All right. This is the fun part. Now, if you, I want you to feel your plaster. If it's a kind of textury, if you think it's got too much texture to it, just come back with a little 400 sandpaper and lightly sand it. But putting milk paint over plaster is, is about texture. The other thing that you're gonna notice, it's gonna suck it in really quickly. It's, it's very um, thirsty and it's that matte plastery finish. So we're gonna work on small segments at a time. Let's say you've got a nightstand. Let's take that drawer out and we're just gonna work on the drawer and get it completed, then we'll go to the top. Then if we're gonna do the side, we're gonna lay that piece on its side and then we're gonna do the side of the piece. Yes. We have a question from Laura Annette. Can you add mica powders to the plaster? Yes. Is this Laura? Uh-huh. Laura, okay, did y'all hear her question? Can we add mica powders to the plaster? Yes. You're my new best friend. I love the fact that y'all all think outside of the box. That is so great. Yes, you can. Um, test it. You will need to see as far as the, the amount. Like if I'm working with um, a cup of plaster, I might do two, tables, two large tablespoons of mica. But yes, I love that. But remember, you can also take mica powders and mix it with wax and put that over your entire piece. But yes, you can mix it with it. It all goes together. All right. So I am mixing this up. I want to make sure that it's agitated. Laura says, and you are her new best friend. Oh, it's funny. It's like we're all kindred spirits because we're creative and we love rescuing and restoring furniture. So I love that. Okay. All right. So uh, make sure if you did sand it, make sure that there are any residues off. And then you're going to be coming in. I want you to work fairly quickly. So let's just pretend that I am working on the... Um, a drawer to my piece. I am working quickly, guys. I'm working this around and making sure that I've got coverage. You can tell by, it's, it's almost dragging by how much it's soaking into here. Now, here's a little trick. I've never shown you this before. I'm gonna take some paper towels. You can take a lint-free rag. You can take a paper towel because that's why I want you to work on a small section at a time. Look at this. This is almost acting as a glaze but it's gonna be more solid coverage. It won't be opaque. We're allowing some of that plaster to kind of peek through. Look at this. So if you want, you can have your, um, you can have your milk paint that you mix up just a little bit thinner because we're pulling it through. I wanna be able to have a little bit of dark and a little bit of that lighter plaster showing through. Do you love this? All right, so now I'm gonna set this aside. This, to, this isn't gonna take very much time to dry. Um, literally, probably within five or 10 minutes, it's gonna be dry. And here's one that I did right before we went live. Look how subtle it is. I know it's so hard. I, wish it, I wished it was where many of you could be with me here in the studio so you could touch these finishes and you can see how they feel. But um, I, I did it with the paper towel just to be able to pull some of that paint off. Now you can come back um, and you can pull out a little bit. Look at this. You can pull it out just a little bit if you want with the sandpaper. You can also come back. I want to pull that white plaster out. This is my preference. It's a lot easier to work with. I'm going to take just a little bit of my antiquing glaze. And a natural seawool sponge. I've torn this one up. I'm not using much of it. It's just a tiny little thing. It's all I need on this one. And here's the other great thing about the, the milk paint is the fact that it will lift. So now I can come back and what's gonna show up? My plaster underneath, that gorgeous, glorious plaster that it's gonna look like a piece that has come from the 18th century. Look at that, isn't that easy? That way I don't have to go into the sandpaper. I can wear it. It's gonna make it look really authentic and worn. I'm gonna have so many great looking people doing urns that we're gonna all be envious of. Look at that. I'm gonna come back with just a little bit of my paper towel and dab it. But that beautiful plaster, the texture, all that's gonna be showing through. Look at that. Love that, see how easy it is? 
Now you'll notice I'm applying it with the sponge and I'm just touching it. This is my positive tool and this is my negative tool. So I'm doing this to where it's gonna lift it and take it off and then I'm allowing this to come back, pat that, it dries it and lets me see what it is that I'm doing. All right, I love that. Now I'm gonna let that dry about five or 10 minutes and then I'm gonna come back with my waxes I'll come back over all the entire piece. Um, I'll use my hog hair brush. I usually prefer using a round hog hair brush on large pieces of furniture. It allows me to be able to wax it really quickly and I like uh, the saturation that I get. So you'll load it up, always offload before you go onto a piece, go over the whole thing and then come back and antique it where you want with your dark wax. There's a totally different video that I go over light and dark wax application. Um, and it will be beautiful on that. Thanks guys for tuning in today. I want you to enjoy this process. Always start with small samples. Start on a cabinet door that you get at Goodwill or Habitat uh, because guess what? Now it's your turn to go enjoy the bragging rights. Have a great weekend everybody. See you at the state sales.